started the week in a truck stop, which my mom was not too excited about, and her friend had told her, tell Laura, don't talk to people there and tell them what they're, she's doing, because it's a truck stop. And of course, I went ahead and talked to all the truckers anyway. <laughs> one, one guy bought me dinner, and he bought me breakfast, and he said, I just really like what you're doing. I think it's so cool. And they told me about trucking business and how things are and how hard it is to be an independent trucker these days. You know, the big companies have taken everything over. So anyway, I stayed at the truck stop. And then um, my hostess from the, way back at Leavenworth, um, Kansas, called me. She said, I have a friend for you. I have somebody to come get you. And I'd already checked into the hotel at that point at the truck stop. So I said, well, and she said, well, she can come tomorrow. So I was like, all right, that sounds great. So she came and picked me up from the truck stop, and it was supposed to be my day off. So that was nice, and just relaxed, and went out to their house, and somebody came over to try on boots. She sells riding boots, and it was just, it was just a nice time with her family and getting caught up on things. The next night, I stayed with a woman who had been a news reporter, and she traveled all over the world. And she had a boyfriend in Scotland, and you know she was a very international, adventurous lady. And she, you know, we hung out and talked late to late into the night. Actually, I talked until eleven o'clock at night, which is very late for me these days. And she actually did an interview. She wasn't doing the interview; she was on the soundboard. But she worked for you know NBC and CBS, and you know all sorts of different things. And this was when she was in the music industry. She was on the soundboard for the interview with John Lennon. And then I think the next day or just a few days later, he he died, he was shot. So it was his last interview. And she pulls out this record and she's like, if this is gone tomorrow, I'm coming after you. <laughs> it was uh, from that interview. It was really cool. And we didn't listen to it. It was just neat that she had it. So she was interesting. And then um, I was walking off to Union Star the next morning. I left out of the Walmart parking lot. I hadn't arrived. I was out in the middle of the countryside, and I had nowhere to sleep that night, and nothing had worked out. And I'd called the sheriff's office, and they told me to call City Hall. And I called City Hall, and they said, um, hmm. <laughs> it was a pretty small town, but I felt confident that it would be fine. Every time, it's been fine. So I just thought, it's, it's a big enough town that I can walk into town and talk to some people and something will work out. Well, the newspaper guy from the um, St. Joe showed up to do an interview with me. And I explained to him, well, you know, there's many mornings where I don't wake up and I don't know where I'm sleeping that night. And I just walk. And I just feel confident that something will work out. And it has every time. I haven't slept on the ground yet. And he said... You know, I said, for instance, today I'm going to Union City and I don't know where I'm sleeping. And he said, oh, I know people in Union City. And he hooked me up with a friend of his. that um, He's the former mayor and she was teacher of the year this year for the whole school district. And they were just really great people and had a very nice day with them. The next day I was exhausted. And I only walked eight miles. I thought I was going to walk 15 and I got where I was going and I didn't feel good. And I said, can I just have a sandwich and go to sleep? <laughs> it's like four in the afternoon. And she's like, yeah, yeah, that's fine, go ahead. You know, so I had a sandwich and I showered and I got in bed and I went to sleep for two hours. Then I wake up, woke up and just felt like they'd already had dinner. I wasn't being a good guest. <laughs> I just didn't feel good. And then I got a good night's sleep and the next day I was fine. I got up and the good thing was is that the direction I was going to walk an extra seven miles in is not the way I went because the bridge is out. That was bridge number two that I was not crossing. I have many bridges to cross. And I walked um, to Stanbury instead. And I was this week I was in the chain of teachers. Last week it was all, all horsewomen. This week it was former teachers, retired teachers. So they connected me with a family in Stanbury. And they took me out to the Amish. And I turned off my camera out of respect. And, you know, it, it was very, it's a lifestyle that appeals to me a little bit. I like simplicity. And there's something beautiful about somebody growing all their own food and making their own flour and clothing and everything. There's something about that that appeals to me. 
but it's a hard life. <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't actually do it. It's just, I find it appealing. And we bought some candy and some watermelons and came back and had friends over. And one of the things that Linda thought was funny is that she sent out a Facebook message to all her friends and stuff, friends and family. And people kept contacting her on Facebook saying, oh my gosh, I love your new kitchen. It's so beautiful. And they've never been to her house. You know? Oh, I just saw you walk through the kitchen <laughs> while I was in there cooking. So the next night I went to Albany and I uh, stayed with a the family there. And what did we do? Oh, her, her niece and her sister had sister-in-law had been watching the live feed before she even knew that she was that her, her sister was host her sister-in-law was hosting me. Her sister-in-law and niece had been watching the feed because they'd read about it in the St. Joe paper and just liked it. Just they thought it was neat. So when she heard that um, Mary was hosting me, like, oh, can we come over? <laughs> oh my gosh! What, what, how did you do this? Like, why is she at your house? <laughs> But it was this chain of friends, you know, of former teachers. So they came over for dinner and we had a nice time. We hung out and watched the Chiefs, who lost. But anyway, <laughs> and then the next night I walked to um, Bethany. So Bethany, I stayed with a family and or a, a retired teacher and her husband, and they took me to their family reunion the next morning, which was really cool. And then they called their kids, and they got out and watched the family reunion. Because it was a big family reunion. Like, everybody who was in the Stevens family, which goes back to, you know, England. You know, <laughs> like, they had, they, 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 she was showing me the genealogy. It went back to, like, 1400 and something. So, I had my webcam on in there, and there's about 50 people in the room. And she announced, we have this lady staying with us, and she's walking across America, and she's going through all the little towns and cities, and come talk to her about something. <laughs> so I'm piling up food, and people are coming over and, you know, telling me stories and asking me questions and stuff, so, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was a good week. It was a former teacher week. I've done 1,381 miles as of the end of last week. <laughs> 